Well, let me tell you about the world's most insane obstacle course, so-called visa of any nation on the planet right now. It's India. They got real arrogant about issuing visas to low-income people like myself. Uh, to begin with, the humble traveler's got to pay $100 just for a six-month multiple entry visa on some embassy outside of India. But that person is not even allowed to stay six continuous months in India. <laughs> yeah, after three months, uh, he's got to leave the country, physically leave India for two months before he's allowed to return to experience the second three months on his original visa. And what is ha what does this cause? It's a cause... The surrounding countries, like South, all in Southeast Asia, Sri Lanka, uh, Nepal, uh, to become glorified waiting rooms for low-income spiritual pilgrim refugees to wait out their two-month banishment from India. Why? Well, uh, the grand plan is to flush out low-income tourists who Instead of spending $200 a day like package tourists, they spend $200 a month. And uh, they don't want those people here. The money devil gorging on India, renting itself out on a monthly basis to other human beings. Economic arrogance. This unnecessary obstacle course wreaks havoc on the pocketbooks and spiritual life flow of the spiritual seekers. Well, what can you do these days? Well, you can become a devotee of Ama in Kerala, jet in, get a three-week transit visa for free, uh, spend two weeks at Ama's for an enlightenment quickie, and then jet out. Jet your ass in, jet your ass out. Nobody gets hurt or enlightened. No, yeah. Therefore, uh, incorrigible old Western spiritual devotees who are deeply into India's ancient spiritual profundity and want to live in India, uh, they're abandoning go altogether. Now, most people are banning India altogether for the last 25 years. But the diehard India freaks simply migrated 150 kilometers south to Gokarna on the, on the coast. Beautiful place, right on the Arabian Sea, yeah. Uh, so I take a week off from interviewing Eddie and... Uh, after 24 days in Anjuna Beach, I split for Gokarna. I mean, I'm an investigative reporter. I want to find out, are old India freaks there? It's not that far. A train trip takes two hours and costs half a dollar. Well, it occurred to me this could be a fun adventure, just scoot down on a motorbike. I mean, it's only 150 kilometers, but I've been warned... <laughs> There's a state border tax of what and what for? Oh, uh, yeah, the Karnataka guys have uh, picked up on the Goans, and they're milling anybody on a motorbike for money, patting them down. Oh, you got a joint? <laughs> I'll take that passport. <laughs> give me 500 bucks. I might give it back to you in a couple minutes. Mm. Well, uh, let's, uh, let's do uh, some reporting. Dateline, December 21st, 2008. Uh, I'm waiting for my unreserved carriage train to uh, come into Mar, Mar Margoa. It's one hour late. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> this is India. Uh, and I'm excited like an innocent child. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm embarking into romantic unknown to uncover... The secret world of the castaways of Goa. 
Well, the Indians around me, uh, they see me less dramatically as an older, balding, white man with a limp. He's perspiring a lot. Uh, common kindness, they make room for me to sit down. <laughs> Coffee while it comes by. Oh, yeah, I'll have one of those. Offer it to the Indians around me. They're too shy. You know? We don't speak the same language. Oh, here comes a frail old woman. Uh, I uh, motion for s some guys to squeeze closer together so she can sit down. Common decency runs in my blood, too. Yeah, okay. Well, I notice every time we go through a train tunnel, this <laughs> is filled with smoke. Oh, poisonous air. Oh, hard on my lungs. Look, there's a half a billion more people in India than when I was here last time. <laughs> yeah, 1980. To tour the temples of South India and Sri Lanka. <laughs> and the Maldive Islands. <laughs> the world's best snorkeling. Yeah, half a million more people. Now I can just see the difference with my own eyes. <laughs> and these all these Indians, these billions of Indians are, are poisoning themselves with smudge pots of twigs, paper, blur, burning plastic. And I cut out an article in the New York Times to, uh, you know, throw in my book bin. I might want to use it later when I write a book. Well, here it is. New York Times article by Henry Fontaine. Brown cloud over Asia fed by home fires. South Asia. Mm, has a cloud over its head. An unhealthy, unpleasant soup of haze envelops the region. <sighs> Particularly in winter. Actually, it starts in Hong Kong. <laughs> they call it the brown cloud, the scientists. Um, kind of uncertainty, actually, what's in it. Soot, maybe from carbon-containing aerosols, yeah, some of that, fossil fuels from cars, power plants, sure, and, uh, and but most, much, from the burning of wood and biomass for uh, cooking and agriculture. 